that we did not get to during the course of the uh, show today. And we're actually uh, Facebook living this as well. We haven't done that in, in a while. And it, today is a really bad day for that. I have something going on with my nose. It's driving me crazy. I get like a little pimple thing. I'll, mm-hmm. get, I'll see if I can get up close to the camera. But I get like this little <laughs> pimple thing that is under the skin and it hurts to touch and it feels like it's attached to my spine. So I'm not sure. Attached to your spine? That's what it feels like. This is right. disgusting. I'm so sorry, everyone. Yeah. This is not the way to start. A Facebook Live. Isn't Facebook Live awesome? <laughs> I was telling Wally this morning, though, after he mentioned that, I'm like, I have this spot on my nose that, like, pushes in like a button. Yeah. And he's like, I kind of want to touch it. And so he touched my nose. I, I was know. Like, oh. Yeah, she she was like, you know, I, 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 I would it be weird if you touched it? I'm like, actually, kind of kind of wanted to. And so we mutually, not me too this, we uh, mutually uh, decided that this would be okay. We've written it down. And I touched her nose and was like, ah! It, it, it felt it's weird, odd. right? Yeah, it felt like a cavern in there. Yeah, anyone like, else want to touch my nose? Yeah, I'm good. No, it's it's worth you it. You have a cavern in your nose? Uh-huh, yeah. touch it. Touch just right that, here. Just push touch that little like part. Button. Yeah, push that little part. See, right? that's it. it. Pops. Yes, like a, like uh-huh. a bubble, bubble. Yeah, right? yeah. And then Ew. Betty just wiped her <laughs> finger on her. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. So that's what's going on here inside the room. Uh, but then just outside the room, uh, we actually have an artist in uh, the studio today. This will uh, be a better camera angle right than. Now. Oh, they're out of shot right now. Aww. Fantastic! It's Hillsong. Well, we can see all of Zach's digital department and an intern, uh, but no Hillsong people. That's weird. Where'd they go? Where'd they, oops. Did we lose them again? We we lost them while people were looking at your nose. I guess so. That's my fault. <laughs> and the nose might have been more interesting. We're not sure. We're uh, not sure. <laughs> so, yeah, Hillsong is uh, hanging out. And I'm not even sure. I get confused as to which Hillsong is who. And this who's is the what. worship one. That's Hillsong they worship. they like each other? Was that Brooke I, Frazier? I'm sure. Yes. That was Brooke Frazier? Oh, she looked totally different than when I saw her nine years ago. Uh, so that's, that's nice. Uh, we had her on a long, long time ago back in the Total Access days. Uh, we, Why is that nice? Was she ugly when you first met her? Oh, no. She was nice. No, oh, she's, no, no. <laughs> we had, um, what was I going to say, uh, Hillsong United in uh, Watea. She smells so good. I know. Like, <laughs> they were so nice. It was Joel, right? Isn't it Joel? Yeah. Joel and Taya from Hillsong. And that was really fun. I didn't know what to expect with them. And so, because it's kind of like Mark Hall, people think that he from Casting Crowns is going to be this real serious guy because their music's so heavy, and he and he's just funny and bizarre and odd and and wonderful and uh, ADD, and he's just an interesting guy to be around. And I wasn't sure if uh, Hillsong United was me the same way. Like, are they deep, and are we going to have these philosophical, you know, th- theological conversations? Joey, or not Joey? You're. Yeah, You're I'm Wally. Wally yeah, <laughs> she always calls me her husband's name. It's the best. I do. I get. Uh, and I'm, Zach is now in the mix too. I can't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I was say it. <laughs> <laughs> but that yeah, was great. <laughs> they uh, they weren't like that at all. They oh, were you can't so be deep light. for long. That's it. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Huh? That's it's not like my uh, specialty. Um, so all right, let's get to some of the stuff. We'll wait and see if they come back in and or if they're just gone. They might have just evaporated. Do you want me to go find out? Not really. <laughs> They're probably doing liners, like running uh, ways and stuff right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Business stuff that yeah. all artists hate. Because <laughs> what happens is, here's what happens. Here's the behind the scenes. Artists come in for an interview, and what's what's happened here now, because we have a bunch of radio shows here, is the record company brings them in, and they want to not have to bring artists in five different times. So everyone lines up, basically, to interview them. And so, like, we might interview them, then uh, Joy would interview them, then Justin for the night show uh, interviews them, and then they have to do liners and read Bible verses, and it's just this grind for them, which I would not be—by the end of it, I would just be exhausted if I were them and not ever want to do it again. And we feel bad for them, which is why— like we didn't take Hillsong uh, Worship just to give them a break. So yes. If you have questions for them, go ahead and write them in the comments. We'll answer the questions for <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. But we're I not going to bother Australian them with the questions. I, I might would walk in if they were doing something else, and if there's one really good question, I would run in and ask okay. them. Yeah, I would yeah. do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, so, yeah, you can do that. But let's get to some of the stuff that we didn't get to during the course of the show today. We're going to start with news. Okay, the big news of the day, of course, was the State of the Union address last night. I did not, full disclosure, did not watch last night, A, because I was super tired, B, yeah. because I knew I wasn't doing real news today. Right. So why pay attention? <laughs> I literally had that same thought. I'm like, oh, good, I don't have to watch it to have an opinion. But that's not going to stop me. I, and I wanted, I wanted to go to bed at 8 o'clock. That uh, was genuinely my, my number one But priority. Zach did watch Zach thing. did watch oh, yeah. it. You and have to watch these if you're a good American. And I will say this. It seems from everything I've read today that he was not nearly as 
Trumpian. Trumpian. <laughs> yes. As he, he didn't trump it. <laughs> as he can be. And I'm wondering if because he has Twitter and because he gets lots of attention that way, he gets to kind of say what he wants throughout the year. So the State of the Union didn't have to be this thing where he has to fit in all the things he's wanted to say. I've always had a problem with with Trump when he has platforms to look more presidential and he chooses not to sometimes. Zach, in your opinion, did he come off as more presidential, uh, slightly less arrogant and harsh, you know, last like, night? Completely honestly, when he first walked out, I still laughed because just Donald Trump is our president. Yeah, it's you're still, still funny. <laughs> still trying to get to that. Like yeah. nothing for or against him. It's just funny. Uh but no, I kept waiting for that moment where he would do what he does, right? And it never happened. And then it was, it was confusing. After it, um, I'm hearing the commentators, and they're like, "Oh, this was just a sad speech. It was all doom and gloom and very divisive." And, and I'm like, "Really? I didn't pick up any of that." And people seemed pretty, like. Well, half the room seemed really supportive. Yeah, I did see that. Like, the, he's talking, and the Republican side stands up and cheers, and the entire other half of the room, no one got up. Not yeah, a single person. Yeah, and you person. would say things that Democrats would traditionally always support and be their calling card, and just nothing But sad. because it's, it's him. Like, they had passed out limes beforehand to give them all to just <laughs> suck on and have these pouty faces. It is funny. It's like high school, because I guarantee you, they all, at some point in time, were either on an email or some sort of thread or have conversations in the hall, like, okay. When Trump gets up there and he says something, even if you agree with right. him, we're not going to stand up. We're going to sit down in solidarity and we're going to show him. You know what? That makes you look bad, actually. Right. It, I thought it was a bad look for him because, like, he is so toxic. I understand wanting to be distant from him if I'm on the other right. side. But when you're not cheering for things that are, like— that are good things, right. like regardless. Just good things, regardless. It yeah, they makes should, you look bad. They should have cheered for things like, okay, unemployment's down, yay, right. we're yeah. gonna build a wall. Then you do, you cross your arms 100%. if you're not for it, right. and 100%. that shows more of a protest. I, feel. I always think when people are willing to give credit to somebody who is the polar opposite of them, it makes their complaints the, more viable. The criticism suddenly has validity. exactly. But when yeah. you just, I hate everything you do. Yeah. Well, then no, I don't believe anything you say. Then you right. know. But if you're willing to give him that space and go, hey, that was really good. You did a great job on that. I don't like this. Yeah. It makes it all more palatable. So the commentators on ABC at least hated it from what I watched. And so then when the poll comes out, 75% approval of the speech. <laughs> like, uh, you guys might be on the wrong side of this one. Yeah. Like there was even a scene where uh, he, Trump goes into the patriotic it's stuff and about the greatness of this and that. Approval. And uh, that's weird. That was me. Sorry. Okay. Oh, Betty. But uh, what are you doing, Betty? <laughs> she was opening up the stream. Yeah. Getting. Okay. I'm like, wait. I hear myself. Uh, so he's getting drummed up and uh, patriotic, and then a USA champ breaks out in the chamber. Oh, really? And you see this Democratic senator pop up and walk out of the room, and people like patting him on the arm, consoling him, like. Like if you're a U.S. senator and right. the chant of USA offends you, that's, yeah, that's a you should not be our senator. Be. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like town. I find that there are things you can disagree with him on, but yeah. like, you know that thing that Will Ferrell cool. did with um, was it Molly Shannon with the Thanksgiving parade. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What if they had done so that good. with the speech? I, yeah. <laughs> yes. That would have been funny. That would have been awesome. amazing. Yeah, they should. <laughs> yeah, they should do more of that kind of stuff because he's so good at that. So you know what? All in all, then it sounds like it wasn't a horrible speech, and you know, and and maybe that's a good step. Maybe people like because I, I remember one time when Trump was running, and I saw him on a talk show, and I went. That Trump, I actually would vote for. Like, that guy right there, I would vote for. And then he tweets something insane the next day. I'm like, nope, I'm back out. You know, like, he has moments where you're like, if you were that more, we might actually be able to rally around you. Right now, I'm pretty thrilled with my 401k, so <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I do think, like, at least among conservatives, if he did not have a Twitter account, his yeah. approval rating would double or triple. I think so, too. Like, I think 90% of the things that people object to him are related to his free... Tweeting. And then you have people that are on the uh, on the far right that are like conspiracy too, where they're like, oh, he just does those crazy tweets so he can work covertly on the side. Like, no, he's just a crazy tweet. <laughs> like, don't be that guy either. You know, like, don't hate him for all the good things he does, but don't be supporting him for all the crazy things he I does. I do think he uses it to control the national narrative because anything he tweets is going to be news. the topic for the nightly news for right. everybody. So they have no control over what they're going to talk about. That's why he crushed <laughs> it in the Republican primary because none of the other candidates could get any air because he had, he could. So uh, 
skillfully <laughs> marginalize them. like marginalize them and control the narrative of what's being talked about. Yeah. Uh, time out. Cliff right now is counting all the times you touch your nose. <laughs> My nose is bothering me. <laughs> Thank seven, you, Cliff. That might have been eight. You get yeah. it. I no, get nine. This every day. I know. When you talk, you always are like. Well, no, but recently like it's been worse, and I've got this that bump on my nose, and it's driving me literally crazy, and it really hurts, but I'm playing with the pain, <laughs> and I think I have a, a, a mustache hair getting me there, too. So anyway, um, uh, yes. Uh, Math- Mathen wants to know why you're shaking. Oh, this is just me. That's just you. That's, That's just, just me. You. Like, I'm always moving. I'm kinetic. I'm like a shark. You can't sleep. I just keep moving. <laughs> and so, yeah, I have this nervous energy, I guess, and so. Okay, next story. United back in the news. The airline <laughs> is at it again of not being good to their passengers. What? what? They wouldn't allow a service animal on a flight. Can I'm you outraged. Believe the humanity? I'm outraged, United. What is wrong with you? But then you read into the story a little bit, and this woman was trying to bring her peacock on a flight. Her emotional support, Peacock. You made the right call, United. And you see in the video of her walking into the airport. It's the Newark airport. She's trying to fly to L.A., so it's going to be a long flight. Yeah. And it's this giant bird, like, sitting on her shoulder. Like, like a parrot. Yeah, like right. a parrot. Huge. It's huge. And they're loud. Too. They're like, Aah! What's more dangerous, a peacock or my nail clippers? Mm, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't, yeah. Like, if you had to be locked in the room, yeah, yeah. one against one, which would Maybe you Maybe we should train peacocks in counterterrorism. <laughs> yeah. Because no terrorist would see that coming. <laughs> like, they get pecked, their eyes they pecked out. They your view. Yeah. yeah it'd be like, yeah. oh, pretty colors. Ah, attack, uh, attack, attack, attack. Yeah. Or they're so angry, and then those the, the feathers come out, and they're like, oh. NBC should have like flown a private charter for her <laughs> just for some positive branding. I, I, I hate to sound insensitive, but don't care. Um, I <laughs> that would be a great uh, quote too. Uh, I don't. The whole concept of service animals, I think it's abused, honestly. Yeah. Like, it's like, I'm bringing my service peacock on. No, you probably just don't want to pay to ship it out there. Which is unfortunate for the people who legitimately need yep. service animals. And now everyone's like, oh, why is this dog on this flight? Blah, blah, blah. And why do service animals have to be horses and things like that? Why can't you get a chinchilla? Yeah, you can a, carry it in your pocket. There's a pig. Yeah. And how do you clean up after that? That's the thing. Oh, man. I saw, uh, oh, I wish I could remember the exact stats, but Delta announced that they're going to be cracking down on their service animal Good. policy and it's it's something to do with you have to alert them further in advance if you're bringing a service that's animal fair. that's fair and they said that in the past few years the incidences have like tripled of like either um animals using the restroom on the flight oh, or oh. attacking other or biting other passengers so it's something that they're trying to figure out and then of course people get outraged why would you crack down on service animals and right they're just they're trying to control it without limiting the people who need it again i think it comes down to the people that abuse something that's there for the for a really good purpose like i get that there are people that are very crazy anxious and need that in their lives and that's fantastic but there has to be some sort of line i brought my service animal it's a humpback whale you know like <laughs> what what do you mean I can't bring a uh, humpback whale guy on the thing? Uh, I was, I, Humpty Dumpty, you know, that's his name. It's my, my humpback whale service animal's name. Uh, like, why can't I bring him? Like, so, like, like, just have some common sense inside of this, people. What would be the best, uh, worst service animal to bring on a, on a flight? Any kind of snake. Yes. Okay. Snake. Hadley. 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 Yes, Hadley. Uh, <laughs> a kangaroo, I think, would be awesome, but would be problematic. A wolverine. A badger. Just, <laughs> I've lost my badger. My service badger. Don't pet it. Service badger. <laughs> uh, this next story is good news for if you are a big fan of eating that leftover slice of pizza for breakfast, but people criticize you for it. A nutritionist is now saying that it is much better for you to eat that slice of pizza for breakfast mm-hmm. than a bowl of cereal and milk. Mm-hmm. Really? Because it's about the same amount of calories, but it's actually packed full of protein, and you can get through your day a little bit better. Uh, like my wife used to feed my daughter uh, chocolate cake cake for breakfast and her reasoning was like oh it's the same as a donut you're always talking about what a horrible mom she was yeah oh my gosh that woman <laughs> crazy town she's right behind me isn't <laughs> she okay good no. <laughs> marty <laughs> wave to the camera uh, yeah we're videotaping too by the way that's my wife marty uh but yeah so like so i mean i get this on some level if it's the same uh, yeah i guess i'd rather have pizza too well i think that statement really is how bad the cereal is for you not yeah. how good the pizza oh, for sure. is like when your cereal is literally cookies but i mm. think so, i think all of us deep down like see cereal as a healthy option in our heads and it's like oh it's with milk and it's 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 like cereal pasta. it's bran right so it's fine but right. it's actually not that great for cereal, you. cereal pasta all those things no one sees pasta as healthy <laughs> fries when was the last time you saw an overweight italian i rest my case 
<laughs> I'm not. Gonna, you almost got Anyone? me into that trap of naming <laughs> fat Italian somehow. Anyone want to jump in? <laughs> well, good news after that little rundown. This last story is a happy news story. Uh, with the Super Bowl coming up this Sunday, which is crazy, um, the uh, it is in Minnesota, and the Vikings did not make it into the Super Bowl. But so a lot of Vikings fans were really disappointed. They had bought tickets ahead of time, thinking, okay, hometown Super Bowl, they're going to make it into the game. But uh, there's one fan that is doing something good in the midst of his team not being in the Super Bowl. He had Super Bowl tickets to see his Vikings. The Vikings were eliminated by the Eagles, so instead he donated his tickets to a young Eagles fan. Oh, that's cool. Who's 13 years old and has suffered for most of his life with a rare type of cancer. That's cool. Yeah, and the boy's now cancer-free, so he gets to go to the game, he gets to fully enjoy it, and he didn't have to pay the ridiculous price either, and it's a -a once-in-a-lifetime event for this kid. Yeah, because you know that's not cheap, and so the person giving up those tickets, I think that's that's awesome. That's a stand-up move. Yeah, and that that's how sports should be. I know it's competitive, but like when you see fans doing that kind of stuff, that that makes it really cool. Especially to go to be a bigger person to know. Okay, I know that this team eliminated me, right. and I should have this rivalry and be like, "Oh, I'm not going to give it to an Eagles fan." But the fact that he Why did it for the kid. everyone <laughs> have the same voice? <laughs> or just the people same voice. that that are angry about the Super Bowl or angry <laughs> passengers on a plane. That's your voice for me. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jack. <laughs> is anybody doing like a Super Bowl thing this year? Are you anybody going to anybody's Super Bowl parties? I really want to have a Super Bowl party, but then I remember we always have to go to bed at halftime. I know that is the drag. And so that's kind of weird for Sleep like. Over his can you throw house. a half Super Bowl party? Yeah, yeah. The first and second quarter. I'm yeah. gonna watch it for the commercials and the halftime show. That's it. Yeah, and I'm I'm uh, spending the weekend in Atlanta. Well, I guess we'd be back for Super Bowl though. Like we'd be back. We're coming back Sunday morning. Um, but I'm probably retired from uh, all of my wife's uh, fabric shopping. So <laughs> for your wife, yeah, sure. it's her birthday. It is her birthday, though. her big fiftieth birthday, and uh, so we are gonna go to Atlanta, and she's going to a fabric sale. Wait, did you say fifty? Fifty, yeah. You just said her age. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's fine. Uh, That's a big one. Yeah, it is a big, a big one. one. Happy fifty. What was your baby. favorite thing when you turned fifty? Three Haven't years yet. Ago. Uh, she's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still, I still gotta turn fifty. But this is, this is the ingenious part of this. Is uh, she wanted to go to this fabric sale because she's a quilter, loves this stuff, loves fabric and so i'm like okay well we can do this it'll be a great week and we'll make a weekend out of it and then i i got our friends to go with us uh molly and greg so while she and molly are going we're dropping them off at the fabric store because i'm like hey i don't want i'm letting you i'm letting you in on my secret here i'm like i don't want to uh like rush you you know so like that would be bad because i really want you to enjoy this greg and i are going to race uh simulator cars at the porsche experience i'm like yeah i'm such a good husband i'm gonna go race cars i know (laughs) and it's so smart because she gets to do what she wants to do i'm not bugging her i get to do what i want to do and we've still had a great birthday i think it's, it's gonna be fun and you were cool with that right pants no uh oh. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, this is like, the first she's hearing of this. I know, no, no. You were cool, right? No, I'm good with it. Okay, good. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good weekend. I mean, if you're away, she's good with it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Whatever, Betty. <laughs> I would have totally got that wrong. If you had a choice between race cars and fabric, I would have gotten oh, that wrong a hundred times yeah. out of a hundred. Oh please. It's because Greg's going with <laughs> Okay. Stop it. <laughs> But no. if his friend wasn't going, this he'd gets, be this. like, no, this color goes great with your eyes. He would have had a fuller shopping cart than Marty. Full disclosure, when she does do a quilt and then goes back to the quilt store to have it quilted <laughs> on the machine, my job is to pick out the pattern for the quilt <laughs> <laughs> on every quilt we've wow. done. You're did, a good husband. Thank you. Did, did you give her a list of fabrics you want her to find for you? Oh, no, but I would like a what, chiffon. What is, is that your favorite fabric? <laughs> yes, I love a chiffon. Maybe a chartreuse, chamoose. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> The moose? Sh- Shamoose oh. or something. I don't you know. should make a moose out of that. Charmoose, yes. yes. Yeah. Chartreuse, Chartreuse Charmoose. Charmoose? Yes, a Chartreuse Charmoose is what mm. I'm going for. I think we've gone on a rabbit trail. All right. I think- 17 <laughs> times by the time, by the way. <laughs> hey, also, is it, are you keeping start track? counting how many times Zach coughs. Oh, Let's start counting up there. that. He's got the black lung pop. Uh, all right, we got a little bit of uh, least of these still to yes. do. Yes. So despite the fact that a civil court jury ruled that the former Denver radio DJ David Mueller assaulted and battered Taylor Swift, you remember the story where the he was groping. backstage, he was getting his picture taken. Supposedly, he grabbed her, but she... That's a, that's a, <laughs> that was such a wow, great... That, that was masterful. That was such what? a great pause, and she doesn't even see it. Like, the way you structured that sentence, go back through it. You don't know if it's one T or two. You I know. Just, the way was, he, grabbed he grabbed her, her but, but she... she... Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I missed it. I was like, what? Okay. 
Okay, got it. Yes. Well, almost. Yes, that is correct. Anyways, <laughs> that's what she claims, but he claims that that did not happen. Well, he just got another radio job. It's what? in Greenwood, Mississippi. And of course, Taylor Swift fans are outraged. Livid. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, according to a, so- a source, he is co hosting the morning show under the stage name Stonewall Jackson after Confederate. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, it's just one thing after another. But here's the thing the that guy's guy, a genius. The guy that hired him, he said, I hired him, and yes, I did um, keep in mind what kind of charges those were or something. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he heard his story behind it, and he chose to believe him instead of Taylor Swift, right. and he knew what kind of attention he would be bringing with him right. to the radio station. So it's kind of a selfish move, too, where he wants to Oh, yeah, he's got so. extra press. It's going to yeah. be bad press, uh, but it is extra press. But some say bad press is better That's than right. none. Stonewall Jackson, even with a Confederate yeah, name. That's so really funny. But he's in Mississippi. What do they care? <laughs> Uh, and he's not going to have to worry about artist fences anymore. Yeah, that's true. In that market. Yeah. Uh, Hillary Scott, one third of the country band Lady Annabellum, and also who sings Thy Will, which we play here on the station. She gave birth to twin baby girls on Monday, and there's no word yet on names. Nice. Uh, but now they are a family of five. They have a four year old little girl. Her name is Isley. So in the picture, she had like a stocking cap. One had an A on it and one had a B. I don't know if those are initials or if she's just trying to keep them straight. I said this morning, if I had twins, I would definitely tattoo one. You would. Yeah. But <laughs> then sure. but then it's like, which one do you tattoo? Which do you mark for life? You yeah. Know? The oldest or the youngest? I don't know. The I don't first know. one because they have spare time to kill. But Like they came out early. Oh, okay. that's yeah. true. Yeah. Oh, get them tatted. Yeah. Get them in a chair. Get them all tatted yeah. up. What would you get them? A peacock? A sleeve. <laughs> like, yeah. no, just, like, yeah. just a little do... baby sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> do you like a, do tally? You could tattoo both. Do tally marks. Yeah, like one and two. One just and do two. a mole. Like a mole. On... That's what I say. Yeah, something that you don't know is yeah. a tattoo. That right. just think it's a birthmark. Yeah. I just do it on the bottom of the foot so you don't see it. Yeah. You know? I knew twins named Tim and Tom, and you could always remember because Tim had a little like mole by his eye. Like Was a dot, it a mole like or a, a tattoo? An yeah. Oh. So t- mm, wow. Maybe. Interesting. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. And if you get them mixed up once, like, what do you do? Like, I'm, I'm sure you get them mixed up all the time at that point. Like, how would you actually know which yeah, twin was which? Yeah, there's a chance that yeah. you could have been called by, like, Tim could have been Tom at one point. Right. Tom could have been Tim. And then, and then went Tim went, went back to Tom, and Tom went back to Tim. Wow. And you don't even know it. So confusing. I followed all of that. That's what you <laughs> your twins. <laughs> Were her twins even identical? There's oh, a boy yeah. and a girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. that's why so okay. this conversation is even now. Baby Hillary Scott. Scott. <laughs> Hillary Scott's was two girls. Okay, so, so we yes. got a yeah, boy and a girl. Boy, I don't know how we're going to keep them, keep them <laughs> separate. Why are they identical? Oh, that's true. Well, I don't know. You're asking too many questions. Yeah, I'm not I sure. just read but, the story. But babies look the same. They all look the same. They're all yeah. little aliens. Yeah, They're they are. They're little squishy. Oh, Joanna, because she looked ama- like the cutest. But. Only because you had her. <laughs> I mean, not that I know, because you think she's cute. Yes. Yes. She is she's cute. cute now. Oh, I mean. <laughs> it is funny. Like This I, is where I just like sit okay, back. Okay, oh, okay. this is the best. No, no. This is, okay, this is the thing. When my. <laughs> yes. Every time I've had, and I know I don't have kids of my own, but when I've had nieces and nephews born, I thought they're the cutest babies ever. And then I look back two years later and I'm like, that kid was ugly. Because <laughs> yeah, baby, like newborns are not cute. Yeah. And all dogs look exactly like two. I get that. Uh, <laughs> they don't, but that's not a uh, but it's, condition. Like, I have time hops, so photos of Anna when she was just born are coming in my phone a lot right mm-hmm. now, and it's like, holy cow, she looks like an old man. <laughs> like, just <wrinkled laughs> Thank old you. I'm so glad face. you said that, because oh, yeah. we all thought, no, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she's no, so, like, she's not. so super yeah. cute. Like, Anna is adorable, but that's not what you said this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. A or co- two seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A couple hours out of the womb. <laughs> they're ugly. I mean, we're, your baby's we're, beautiful. We're all glad that she got her hair, though. Like, so that Becca could stop making fun of her for not having hair yes. for, like, oh my goodness. It's like three years. years. That reminds me. Have you, do y'all follow Carrie Job on Instagram? No. I don't. Her baby has no hair. Really? Like, absolutely none. He is Canyon? as bald as the day he was born. Hmm. I don't remember his name. I think it's, like, Canyon or something like he that. He is a bald baby. Nothing there. <laughs> But still a gift from the Lord. Yes. <laughs> ball baby. <laughs> but ugly ball baby. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still waiting for Anna's hair to grow in complete. Because right now it's like lots in the back. And it doesn't help that she's so blonde. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. That you can't is. even see what is there because right. it's translucent. Right, it is. You should give her a comb over. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. When we're out at a restaurant. She's albino. Like when we're. <laughs> 
I don't think that's. Fun. It's like a field day on your poor kid. <laughs> know. You know what? They they fire ESPN anchors for this stuff, or they suspend them. You guys are both suspended. You guys are like the radio people who made fun of Tom Brady. Yeah, exactly. Daughter. Like that's, uh, that's yeah, Becca, how dare you? Yeah, <laughs> how dare me? If we weren't in compassion, I'd make sure you both got suspended. But I need you too much uh, tomorrow. <laughs> you know, what? I'm gonna post three extra videos of Anna just because of your. Speaking of compassion, before we get on to mm-hmm. the rest of Lisa, these and birthdays, is we had a potty John uh, sponsor a kid yesterday, Yay. and so we awesome. talk about potty. He's doing stuff and stepping up and going to allwally.com and sponsoring these kids through compassion. And John did just that. So thank you. John, I bet your baby is beautiful. <laughs> and I'm sure there are more people that did it. That was just one I heard on the show. Uh, somebody else was doing their show, and I heard them mention that, oh, uh, John, he's a potty from the Wally show, listens uh, to their show and uh, sponsoring kids. So that was really cool. All right. Uh, last least of these. or we have t- That was it. Oh, that was it? We flew through that. Holy cow. Let's do some birthdays and call it a day. Uh, hello. My sister's birthday is on the 31st of January. That's today. Yes. She's turning 11. Her question is... This What's is her sister's name? Annalise. And she doesn't say her na- sister's name. Emily? Mm-mm. Hmm. Did you just make that up? No, because I got another email from somebody that thinks they forgot to say their name and I thought it was Emily. Well, oh. this is from Annalise okay. and she just says it's her sister's birthday and if, she's turning 11. If you have a sister named Annalise and maybe your name is Emily, happy birthday! Yay! <laughs> it's the attention to detail that we strive for here. Uh, her question is, do you remember your childhood home? Oh, yes. Very much so. Uh, fun story. I actually uh, dr- drove by it um, last week. Isn't that Aww. fun to do? I did the same no, thing. Because it's sad to do. It was like, oh, sorry, it's been, no. it's only been oh, maybe yes, four years. So. Well, I, I, longer than that since I've lived there, but four years since I've been there because um, my parents sold it. And like, it was so crazy. Like some of the trees were gone. They have like a little back patio concrete area that my parents always talked about doing someday. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, it was really weird to drive by and be like, that's, I can't go in. Yeah, I, yeah. I really enjoyed that, man. Like, I went a few years ago, I was in West Palm, and I hadn't been there in, in a lot of years. And it was interesting because it was very different, but I, I still remember, like, uh, the the side yard used to have a chain link fence and a hill, and that's where my dad would, uh, I'd meet him when he got home from work when I was a kid, and he'd always let me uh, sit in his lap and drive the truck in, and that was, like, a big deal to me, like, as a kid. I still remember that memory. It's one of my best memories of that house. And then the last time I was home and my dad uh, was there, he and I drove down and we went there to see uh, like uh, my nephew's um, soccer game. And he and I went by the house and it was cool for us both to just sit there and kind of share that memory again with him and tell him how much that meant to me. And I was like, that was a cool moment. Hmm. I went by mine and uh, we lived there for maybe 14, 16 years. I can't remember. But um, the people that And they put wheels on it. We took them (laughs) off. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to make it look more classy. <laughs> Why would you put the dang wheels on? You ain't going nowhere in life. We know that. Believe it or not, I did not grow up in a trailer. <laughs> she just went to school in one. It was a yes. double wide. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> classy. Anyways, the people that bought the house I grew up in, they put um, an old junky Coke machine underneath the carport, and it just looks trashy. And yeah. they're all bass tr- um, boat. And- you do hate to see people let it go. Yeah, because you know? it was so pretty. My parents kept it up. And what about you, Zach? Yeah, I just drove by a couple years ago. I lived there till I was five. Um, growing up, we had like two barns and one we were never allowed to go into because it was like falling down. But, oh. Like it seemed like they had restored them a little bit, but it was really cool to see. They were much smaller than I remembered. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the but weird still thing. Really, yeah, it was cool. Like I remember my room as a kid as being like probably three times this size, right. and I bet it's half this size of the mm-hmm. studio, yeah. you know, because it, it, it was a rocket ship. It was a fort. It was everything when you were a kid, you know, and I bet it was nothing all that great. <laughs> I could, uh, yeah, it probably wasn't that cool. Mm. You're up to 18 nose touches. I uh, Yeah, I, um, and there's probably a couple more that I've done with my back to the camera. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, any more birthdays? Nope. That was it? We are done for the day? Yep. Even the one I handed you? Are yep. there any questions oh, on perfect. Facebook about compassion or anything? Uh, uh, still no Hillsong sighting. Sorry. Uh, they walk back to another back studio. Oh, okay. They've just moved them. <laughs> they don't like They're it. like in a witness relocation <laughs> program. I think, I, I think they don't want to be here with us. No. That, it's plausible. <laughs> yeah. Probably so. No, actually, they were going to be on the show. We were going to tape an interview with them, and then we just, uh, after doing Compassion and then this, and then I got to run out and and teach today. Because we go longer mm, when we do Compassion. Someone said you have a snot hand. Uh, Another person wants to know what you smell like. Mm. Funny story. (laughs) (laughs) What? 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 It generally smells good. 
Okay, well, what, thank you. What's the funny? Uh, no, funny story about smelling like. I think I can tell this. It's the podcast. <laughs> Yes. Zach knows it. Okay. What happened? All right. So, and Marty knows it. Okay. <sighs> so, the other day. Oh, wait. Is this all the trip to Ecuador? Are you telling about the bathroom story? Nope. No. No. Different oh, story. This is a different one. Okay. Related, but different. Uh, so, okay. We're, we go to Ecuador. I get sick on my last day uh, there coming home. My stomach is just wrecked. And so, I'm taking a modium, everything, just to try and get uh, through the flights home. And my stomach is so sick. And so, we finally get home. And I'm just like, oh, my stomach's gurgling. We're on the bus headed back to uh, pick up our car and my stomach's gurgling and I, in full disclosure, <gasps> you tooted. No, no, no. Oh. I, 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 I tooted a, a tooted. silent one. You I tooted a silent one. But the best part is, as I tooted, it was not. Le- it was no less than three <laughs> seconds later, just for the time in the bus. And Betty Rock goes, "I smell wings. We <laughs> smell good." Oh, that, was me, yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that was me. Yes. That was me. I completely remember that. <laughs> Yeah. And she's over there going, so nasty. Yeah. she's over there going, Mandy's no, waste I did not. No, I did <laughs> Drink not. Give me some blue <laughs> cheese and celery. Oh, I've never smelled anything this good in my life. <laughs> you are so nasty. I know. And I didn't have the heart to you tell you on the bus. You dusted me. I did. And I didn't have the heart to tell you on the bus. And I wasn't oh feeling gosh. that good. So your toots yes. smell like chicken, chicken wings. wings. Yay. Are you still hungry? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> that was so nasty. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was the best. Wow. Okay, can I tell the funny story about you getting um getting a swirly? <laughs> well, he's like, Wait, what? what? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're in Ecuador. <laughs> And Wally goes to the bathroom. He comes back. Still and sick he, that day. <laughs> Wally comes back and he's like, oh, well, that was an interesting situation. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to know. And he said he went because his tummy was hurting as a tender tummy. I do. So he bent down to wipe off the seat. And when he did, it was one of those automatic flushes. <laughs> And it flushed <laughs> ugly, nasty Ecuador third world country potty water in his mouth and in his oh, eyes. So bad. Up his nose. Yeah, just <laughs> like. <laughs> so I'm standing there, like going, processing what has just happened and how much sicker I'm probably going to get. And I'm just like. Oh, so I That's walked out so and gave them a travel tip of don't ever put your face <laughs> near the bowl with an automatic Nobody flusher. Nobody needed that tip. Yeah, no. Well, apparently one of us did. <laughs> and it was so funny because I'm telling this story and I'm just repulsed by it. And Zach's like, I don't believe your story. I'm like, really? How can you not believe my story? I'm like, this is legit. Yeah, because I had just come back from the bathroom, and there was still soap left in the dispenser. Yes, he, <laughs> like, like, if that had actually happened, you would have emptied that dispenser. Bathed in it. You, you would know? have drunk it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, it was so bad. But uh, anyway, so there you go. Maybe Travel that's why tips. your nose is uh, giving you problems. <gasps> I didn't even think of that. Oh, it went up my nose. contact exposure. Oh, my goodness. It went up my nose. I have no oh, idea what I've goodness. caught. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Now it makes it worse. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's going to that's gonna. Do- oh, it hurts so bad. All right. That's they gonna- do say that when your nose is itching, it means someone's talking about you. Oh, I thought that was your ears. No, no. I thought no, it was your ears, ears itching. No, no. Yeah. Because it would make more nose. sense. You don't smell people-ish. And, I do. Unless you got wings. <laughs> wing toot. That could be my nickname. Toot wing. <laughs> That's so nasty. Can, I, can my new nickname be wingman? <laughs> Oh, I know it's childish, but gosh, I love the podcast. Oh, All right, gross. a couple questions real quick. We're sure. in Ecuador. We were in Guayaquil, and then drove up to Manta. Manta. And that uh, someone used. Uh, she's from Ecuador and used to work with Compassion, Tammy. Oh, so very that's cool. really cool. Uh, and then someone asked if we're having Jordan Flees when in when his new album comes out in March. Oh, I could see that. that. It's been a while. I I really like Jordan, and oh, we should get him. At, we should. We should do something with hats. He never takes off his hat. I finally, I was trying to get it. I did, I thought about it too late. I wanted to get an Instagram with him on Winter Jam. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, he was playing ping pong. I'm like, dude, you all, you have a, a beanie on. Like, do you have a head under there? And he took off his hat and was like, yeah, look, he's got really long hair. And I, I wish I had been run, doing an Instagram video. But we should see what kind of hats we could make for him to wear. Like, that would be fantastic. We each make a hat for him. Yes. Like, something, like, just crazy and, and he weird. he has to take on that persona when he's wearing that hat. Yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Whatever the hat represents. We're spitballing here. Hat. Yes, Arr! And yeah. he has to do the interview like that. That is a fantastic idea. That is what we will do with Jordan Feliz. So thank you very much for the idea. Yes, and 
we actually have to get out of the studio because they need to tape another interview with Hillsong Worship. Oh. And, okay, uh, bye. Well, uh, so apparently, right. are still here. Oh, okay. Well, hey, hey come oh. on in, Hillsong. Oh, How <laughs> about it? The camera that goes ready to go. Okay. <laughs> okay. See ya. No, not with us. No, no, no.